everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo, my name is Adam Smith and we are headed right back into Cthulhu Death May Die here on the channel. Part number three is about to commence, but just before we get started with Adam's turn, we're going to talk about where we left off in the last turn at the end of the prior video, part number two, where Rasputin had found a locked cabinet with an amulet as well as a spirit and he could choose which way he wanted to go. I threw that back to the community here at Rolling Solo and through the comments as well as voting, you guys made your decision and that decision was the amulet. So we're going to be going ahead and taking that and slotting it into the left-hand side of Rasputin's board. And then, now, we're going to move right into part number three. Before we start things off with Adam's turn, I first want to show you guys what the actual card looks like that we had to make that decision on, for those of you that didn't see that in the prior videos. So the amulet is the one that the community is choosing, so that will be the one that we'll be displaying on the left-hand side of Rasputin's board as I mentioned. Now the other thing to mention as well is if you haven't checked out the earlier entries of this playthrough already to understand how we got to where we are right now, a link is going to show up in the top right hand corner of the screen where you can go and check out the entirety of the showcase from the start. So a lot of you coming in new to this might want to check that out prior to seeing this video. Without further ado, for those of you that have been part of the journey all the way along, let's head right into Adam's turn. I definitely think it's worthwhile to take a look at Adam's character board so you guys understand exactly where his current state is in terms of his sanity up top, his stress right there with the lightning bolts being completely maxed out and the wounds below. So you can see three slots away from death for Adam right now. Now the other thing I have to make note of is the fact that I have two cultists in my room with me right now and a cultist next door. I have three actions on my turn and I am very tempted to just make three full fighting actions to wipe out every cultist around me like a madman because as as the quote says right up here, shoot first and never ask. So really, that is going to be my strategy. I'm going to try to hopefully take down the ones in my room first. And if that goes south, then I'm going to have to do at least one action's worth of resting in case I get hit pretty badly by all the remaining cultists. We'll see how the first couple attacks go and make that judgment call. So I'll be going after one of the cultists in my room for my first attack, but I thought that was a good idea until I realized the fact that, as you saw in the last clip, I'm just on the brink of hitting a sanity threshold. And as you know, Adam's basic condition it can allow him to remove all of his stress and we also gain an additional die. So it would be kind of silly of me to actually go ahead and attack one of these cultists in my room rolling three dice when I could instead turn around for my first action and shoot at this guy where I know I'm going to get a guaranteed extra two green dice. It makes for what will should be a better and more guaranteed successful attack. Plus I should hopefully find at least one tentacle inside of here in madness that can push my sanity up to that threshold. That's actually kind of what I'm hoping for. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to make that attack and as you know I'm gaining these two dice because of my marksman ability. So let's see how this roll goes. Well, that was pretty much perfect, except for the fact they didn't get any tentacles. So nothing happened in terms of what I actually needed. Ah, so sometimes this game will do that to you. You'll have a nice plan in your head and you're going to have to adjust. Well, I hoped to get that extra one so I could get an extra green die when I start fighting these guys off. Maybe it'll happen on the second cultist, but this is a mass overkill shot against this cultist right here. So he's blasted right off the board, no problem at all. So let's go ahead now, remove the two green dice because we're fighting enemies inside of our space. We're going to roll these three. Again, remember, my stress is maxed out. Can't re-roll anything. So again, if this particular shot goes badly, I'm going to be probably resting for my third one in terms of the action. So let's see how it goes. Oh, that one rolled right back over thanks to the token. So I got two successes, which is exactly what I need to kill one of these guys, plus the tentacle, which is going to push me into that threshold. So even though the first roll didn't work out in my favor, the second one was perfect. It allows me to push my sanity and lose a little bit more of it in order to go up to a threshold, which then is going to give me an additional green die when rolling with Adam going forward. And this is for all rolls in the game, remember. So that's actually really, really handy. We'll be using this for sure when we go against that last cult and makes me not so much as worried with actually healing or resting to recover some health because I think I should be able to take this down now, famous last words. But the reason I think I can do it is from this short-term memory loss triggering, which again, if you're at full stress, heal all of your stress and discard one discovery card of your choice. If you are not at full stress, take one stress. Well, I don't have any discovery cards to discard anyway after the fact, but the stress regardless is all the way 
revived, essentially. I have no stress in my life whatsoever, which means I'm gonna have the ability to reroll dice again, finally. So that's fantastic. Now the question comes to be, which skill do I wanna bump up? So taking a look at the skills for Adam, I have choices for sure. First off, I could bump up Fueled by Madness, which ironically gains me a green die while my sanity is on a threshold, which it currently is. So when I go up against that last cultist in my space, not only do I have an additional green die for all my rolls for the rest of the game, but because this marker is actually sitting right here and I have this skill available to me, I'm gonna get an additional green die on top of that as well. So I'll have two green dice plus the three base. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna fail that and I also have full stress in order to or multiple stress in order to spend to reroll if needed so I'm probably not going to bump that one up even though these get pretty powerful as you go along the one I'm really intrigued by here is marksman I can bump myself up the next level and it says you may attack a target one additional space away the reason that's intriguing to me is not only can I hit the star spawn for where he currently sits but later when Cthulhu is on the board Adam doesn't need to be you know within range and we all and we we I've kind of noticed within the game so far, at least with this episode, is with if you're within one tile of an enemy, you're usually in trouble of that enemy coming into your space. But if I was two tiles away from the enemies and I could clear most of them out, then I could be in a better spot to actually protect Adam from dying because he is my weakest character, being that Rasputin can come back from multiple deaths from wounds. Adam cannot do that. He's only got one life. So this could be a really nice positional skill to have for him. But also toughness at the bottom here is really good because right now I have, you have one free reroll when attacked or rolling for fire. That's really handy. And I've been using that. But instead, which means I don't get to use that, instead I get to do this, you may reduce wounds taken and loss of sanity by one when attacked or rolling for fire. So just a better version of the prior one, right? More successes right off the hop, essentially, instead of having to roll. So. I'm still kind of thinking that in terms of what's going on right now, this is my best option. So I'm going to go ahead and bump up his marksman skill to the second position. Now this is where things get really fun because I've now given myself some additional range. I could technically actually not focus on the cultist knowing full well that he can't actually kill me because the cultist is rolling two green dice, which at best is going to give two successes. And I have the availability to take three damage before I die with Adam currently. And instead I take that attack and actually turn around and focus with my now additional range two spaces away and take a shot at the star spawn, meaning I can actually take the star spawn down before the star spawn gets to the stairwell and down towards Rasputin, and then Rasputin has to deal with them. Now, I mean, either way, my characters, I think, are suited to be able to handle, but I kind of want to leave Rasputin to getting that last lab and not have that star spawn show up in his space and just cause a lot of delay. So what I might do, being that we have no Mythos cards revealed and we know Cthulhu is not going to move for quite a bit, uh, this is probably a good time to kill this star spawn while I have the chance, plus with all the dice I have. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to take two green dice. As I talked about before, how I'm getting those is one from the fact I've leveled up and have this permanently for all my rolls going forward, and the other, thanks to Fueled by Madness skill, and then my three black dice, and we're going to roll these off. And in order to kill this thing, the star spawn, I believe, is seven. Yes, it is. So here we go. Let's see how this goes. So right now we need three. Okay, did we pull it off? Uh, Elder Signs, I don't believe for Adam Elder Signs are any good. So I've got two. So the question is, I'll probably just re-roll the green one because I don't want to incur any madness, I don't think, at this point. We still have a lot of fighting to, with Cthulhu to do. So I will take one stress on Adam to re-roll one green die and hope for this third success. Yes, I got it. It just fell off camera, but you guys can see that that was clean. So there we go. We took out the star spawn. So that thing can be removed from the, bo the board before it happens to get away. Shot it in the back on the way down the stairs. So Adam will incur some sanity loss thanks to a single point of madness that he got while trying to take down the star spawn. At least he was successful in doing so. And now we're going to go ahead and pull a mythos card for Adam and see how things pan out for him. This is where my plans usually go sideways. Oh, we got another symbol here. So this is the start of a brand new set of symbols. So we need two more symbols, essentially, in order to have Cthulhu trigger again. It says right here, it's going to be all based on those tokens, those episodic tokens that came in the box. We've already got a few of them on the board now. Every investigator with one of those tokens in their space is going to lose a sanity. Well, guess what? Adam and Rasputin are both in that space or in different spaces with those tokens. So they're each going to lose a sanity.
So Rasputin is also going to take a hit, moving him down the track. The next question is whether Adam's in a safe space or not. He is absolutely not, and he's going to be taking an attack right now. Two green dice are coming his way. Let's see how this goes. Oh, we got ourselves two successes against us. That's really bad. So now Adam is one away from death. That's definitely, definitely not good. Okay, so uh, that might have been a bit of an aggressive. Now, the thing is, too, I do have stress available to me, and I can use that stress to re-roll dice from the enemy. So maybe to keep myself you know, a little bit you know, further away from death, I'll spend one stress. So that puts me with the halfway mark of stress. Now I have two more available after spending this one to re-roll one of these dice to try to get rid of one of these successes. Because remember, you can do this to alter the enemy's uh, successes as well. Much better. So a blank. So it's only going to be one hit for Adam, meaning that I'm two hits away from death now, which should give me a little bit of a buffer, hopefully enough to handle whatever Mythos card comes from Rasputin's turn is my hope. So this is what the basement is currently looking like for Rasputin. He's got a cultist in his spot. And he's got labs in two different places he could go after. Doesn't matter which one. We take it down. We're going to break or disrupt the ritual. And Cthulhu is going to become mortal and be summoned into our world. And we'll be able to try to take it down stage by stage. So what I'm going to do here with Rasputin is I'm probably going to attempt to take down the cultist in his space. So I do have his brawling skill. It says gain a green die when attacking a target in your space. So I know I always get that extra green die thanks to being in the same space with with that cultist right next to it because I upgraded a skill I have the other one here that says when you attack you may target any number of figures well there's only one so we, don't, we can ignore that we also don't want to forget the fact we also get a green die for Rasputin because of his ongoing uh, sanity uh, bump up in terms of leveling so he's actually got two green dice and three black dice going in this roll so pretty good against the cultist so let's see how it goes yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's one, two, three successes. Plus, he can actually go ahead and instead count uh, any number of Elder Signs of successes. So he actually landed five hits there, which is insane and would have been really helpful against a, a, a really big, powerful enemy. But instead, we just blasted this cultist off the map. Now our main objective is to move and then make an attack against this lab. And I won't be able to use as many dice as I just had there, but I will get at least one green die because remember, one of them unlocked from my skills and I get it for every roll. So the second thing I'm gonna do is move into here. When I move out of a space with fire, I have to take a fire token and put it on Rasputin. He'll have to deal with fire at the end of his turn as part of kind of like the, uh, the resolving of end of turn. So I've grabbed an extra token. I'll put that on his player board. He's now in this space. I'm only choosing to move one spot with him because I want to get close to a lab. He gets one green die because he unlocked it through his skills earlier on. Gets it for every roll. Plus three green, uh, three black dice, sorry. The other green die was specific to brawling attacks. This is not considered an attack to go up against this lab. So let's see how it goes. I really want to see four hits. That would be incredible. Oh, so close. So close, so much uh, madness there though. So I'm close, it's worth re-rolling for me. So I'm actually gonna take a stress because of, oof. the question is, do I wanna summon Cthulhu right now? It's pretty empty in here. We don't have many enemies, it might be worth it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use one stress to try to convert this black one here to a success. Come on, make it happen. Yes, I got it. I went a little mad at the same time too. Sweet, so that thing is going to be taken down right now. What happens? Inferno, that's that's not what you want to happen right before Cthulhu shows up. Place a fire token in this space and each adjacent space. Oh, that is really bad. Okay, that could have happened anywhere else in the game board. It wouldn't have been all that bad, but here we go. Ready for an Inferno? So we got one token in here. We'll have one token in here. Things are getting really hot. You know what's good about this in a way though? Remember that uh, amulet that we picked up earlier? Well, looks like I'm gonna be able to run around like a fool with all the fire around me and could potentially use this to my advantage. It might be able to do it right off the hop, which would be pretty cool. So that essentially is all three actions for Rasputin and we have gone ahead and satisfied the major objective of disrupting the ritual. So even though we went ahead and disrupted the ritual in the last clip, we don't actually resolve the summoning of Cthulhu just yet. That actually happens during the resolve end of turn for Rasputin at the very end when we're checking whether the Elder One should be summoned. And that can again occur through him either hitting the red space on the summoning track or we 
disrupted the ritual, which we just did, then we're gonna go ahead and deal with some stage card and all kinds of other fun that'll happen. But first, we gotta go through the rest of Rasputin's turn, which is gonna involve a Mythos card. So let's see what happens. Monster in the lab, or monsters in the labs. That's not good. So each fire vampire and bikey move one space towards you. Perfect. We don't have any on the board, so that does nothing. But the bad thing is we're going to have a fire vampire show up in yellow and a uh, bikey show up in blue. So that's really terrible for Adam. Again, he's getting wedged into that position and is just fighting, fighting, fighting nonstop. Poor Adam cannot catch a break. He's got enemies coming at him from every angle. He just wants to get into the basement and ha help Rasputin try to take Cthulhu down when he shows up, but he can barely keep up with the number of enemies showing up in front of him. He's got his work cut out for him for sure. The next thing we need to determine is whether Rasputin is in a safe space. Well, I mean, if you consider safe having tons of fire and inferno burning around him, kind of like that meme of the dog sipping the coffee while the inferno just blazes around him, that's essentially a safe space in this game, which is ironic and actually fits the meme perfectly. Uh, but essentially, he is safe. There's no enemies in this space, and that's all that matters. So he does get a discovery card. He actually finds something in the inferno. And I mean, it is Rasputin. He loves fire, so he's a little crazy. What what did he find in here? Ironically, he's found lab books, and I'm likely that they're possibly on fire as well. It says it's filled with a strange scrawl. Something about swapping the minds of humans and animals looks like nonsense. You may claim the lab notes. Lab notes, gain two green dice, or I guess, yeah, oh, gain two green dice to all rolls if you have at least one student or animal companion. Interesting. So that's kind of cool. We don't have any companions yet, but sounds like it could be paired up pretty cool in the future. So we'll definitely be taking it. So here's what it looks like when you actually gain another discovery on the exact same side of one you already have. You'll just slot it in right behind the one that you already have, and it's perfectly fine. You can continue doing this. The one thing that Rasputin has to deal with, though, is eventually when his actual insanity track continues to go up, every time he hits one of these thresholds, his condition, obsessive disorder, is going to trigger. And we all know this one's going to be nasty because it has him discarding discovery cards as needed until you have the same number of cards on each side of the board. So having two on the one side and nothing on the other means he's guaranteed to lose both of these cards. The only way around stopping that from happening is he could trade them away. But as you can see, we've got two investigators on two different levels completely split up and now with completely different objectives of survival. Now we're going to go ahead and resolve fire on Rasputin to end off the turn just before we move into seeing whether or not Cthulhu is going to summon, which we know he will. Uh, we're going to go ahead now and roll a standard die for every single fire token on this character. So right now there is one. So we're going to roll this die. And actually, if I landed this result right here, a success would actually give me a wound. And a tentacle is going to have me lose sanity. And yes, you can actually have both occur. That would be really bad. I can use stress, if I have any left, of course, to re-roll the die if I don't like the results. But... That's, you know, that's up to me. So let's see what goes. Let's see how it goes. Obviously, blanks in this situation are the only thing that's good or an elder sign. So here we go. Ah, so madness. So the question is, do I want to take this madness knowing full well that I'm getting closer and closer to that thre uh, threshold that is going to have me lose both of the items that are super, super powerful? Ah, now, how many sides of this die have a madness on them? It looks like there's two. So it's actually low odds to get that one compared to everything else. I'd almost rather take the wound, to be honest. Um, so let's go ahead and, uh, I don't know. I do like having the availability of two extra stress because that can actually incur wounds. Some of those cards we've seen is if you don't have the availability to take two stress sometimes, you have to take a wound. So maybe I will just suck it up and take that hit of madness because what I'm hoping to do in the next turn is when Cthulhu shows up is do a lot of movement and then just have a ton of fire on me and from that point on, I should be okay. I don't anticipate having any other enemies in my uh, space, but we'll see how that pans out. All right, are you guys ready for this? We're gonna go ahead and summon Cthulhu. So what we're gonna be doing here is we'll be taking Cthulhu off of this track and instead we'll be placing this marker, which has been up here the whole time, to represent Cthulhu on the track. And of course, time can still slip away and we can still lose that way. So not only that, but plus the fact our characters can just outright die and that could obviously 
obviously cause problems. So we'll take him off. He's in the third green position. So this tracker is going to sit in the third green position like so. And we'll continue to move down the game board. I'll go ahead and orient this so it's actually the exact same way as this one right here. Next thing we need to do is actually move past stage number one. So we're going to do exactly that. We're going to push past stage one. But just remember that stage one actually still stays in play. So we're just going to place it up here for now. And now we focus on stage two. You can see on stage two, we've actually got some health here. So 12 health. Now here it should tell us where Cthulhu is actually going to be summoned to. So this little area at the top here says, when revealed, summon Cthulhu into your space. Each enemy in one of those token spaces moves one space towards you. Well, that's unfortunate. So what's going to happen is he's drawing all of his cultists, essentially, towards himself, which is going to cause a lot of grief. So let's go ahead and put Cthulhu on the board and see whether other cultists are going to be moving around. Cthulhu has been made mortal. What do you guys think? Uh, do you think this is going to be quite the overwhelming task? Do you think I can pull this off? Well, it seems like Rasputin feels pretty brave in this situation, being that he's the only one down there in the basement going to be fighting him currently. But yes, Cthulhu has made it onto the board in the exact same space as the investigator that caused the end of the ritual or disruption of the ritual. So the when revealed effects are now complete minus we now have to move any of the cultists that are in those specific token spaces. So this cultist right here is not because he's in a lab space. So that doesn't count. He will stay right there. But there is another one that is and it's actually in the upper level with Adam. So this cultist is going to be moving again one space towards Cthulhu. So he's actually going to move out of my space which is really nice actually because that puts him in a dangerous position because Adam is actually stronger from range with his attacks so this works out beautifully uh, so I'll be able to make some even stronger attacks to guarantee hopefully that I can wipe these things out plus I can shoot long range so I can actually spend three full turns hopefully wiping these things off the board if all goes well so another thing you're going to notice on this card that wasn't there in stage number one is the dice. You can see now what Cthulhu is going to be throwing at us when he attacks. Two green dice and two black dice. You can see at the very bottom here it says at the end of each turn, put one of those tokens in Cthulhu's space. So Cthulhu is going to be basically just constantly dropping these tokens in, which is obviously going to compound and cause a lot of problems for us over this period of time. And then it says if there's already a token there, put it in the nearest space that doesn't have one. So yeah, he's just surrounding himself with a lot of help. So now we've completed the summoning of Cthulhu, but there's one really, really important rule to take note of, and that's the fact that just because we've moved to stage number two with Cthulhu does not mean that the prior stages and what those effects do to us as we've been dealing with them already, stop. They don't stop, they actually continue, and you're going to have to resolve those particular steps in order during the turn order at the very end in the resolve end of turn step. So in other words, that stage one card, long story short, when it says when Cthulhu advances, when this thing advances on the summoning track, which can still be triggered the same way it always can be, that's the problem. It's still going to go ahead and have us do all kinds of nastiness with the tokens and have cultists show up and all kinds of other stuff that we've been dealing with. The star spawn's going to come back. So we're not just dealing with stage two. We're dealing with it in addition to stage one. And that means as we go to stage three and on and on and on, things are going to get more and more nightmarish. So as you can see here, this is where Adam is currently situated for his health and his stress. Just before we head right into his turn, he's got lots of monsters to go up against. All right, Adam, it's your time to shine. Your original plan was to have no monsters here and book it right down the stairs in the back here to, into the basement to help out Rasputin and to help take Cthulhu down. But instead, now you have all kinds of monsters around you. We know this one right here is really nasty because it can literally up and just fly to the other side of the board and start attacking a different investigator. I don't really want that to happen. Rasputin's got enough in his hands right now with Cthulhu right beside him, so I'm going to try to avoid him taking extra damage where he shouldn't need to. I'm going to focus on taking this thing down first, and then we'll go from there. Now the great news is with the cultists moving out of my spot last time into this space, everyone's away from me. So the great news is Adam currently has his three black dice that he always gets for base. One additional one for the skill up that he had earlier on. And then on top of that, because he's an individual, he's a great marksman, when he's shooting somebody outside of his space, any anytime outside of his space, it says gain two when attacking a target not in your space, so even up to two. I get two more green dice, so I'm rolling a ton of dice here. I have two stress remaining, I doubt I'll need it. So I'm gonna roll all these dice. 
I guess the only downside is madness could occur, but remember, you don't get madness on green dice. So it's exactly, you, you don't really increase your madness chances at all. The green dice just give you a way more success chance. Except when you roll three complete blanks and then barely make it. So I also never told you guys that I, well actually I just mentioned I have stress. I'm totally using that. That's essentially what I meant by that. So I've got three blanks, so we'll just take those out of the equation for now. I don't have anything that can use Elder Signs. Two successes that I'm gonna hold on to, and I'm definitely gonna re-roll a die here. So I'm gonna re-roll the green die, so I'll burn one stress. That's really unfortunate, because I thought I could do much better with that roll. That was pretty poor. Oh, just barely. Okay, so we got the three, so this thing is out of here. Takes three to kill it, it is now gone. Is there anything on it that will hit me? It says when it attacks, no. So its abilities are all about it attacking me. I attacked it, clean kill, it's gone. That was one action, I've got two more to go. So here's where things get interesting. With the amount of dice that I'm rolling, it feels like I should be able to try to go after this thing and just wipe it off the board like it never happened. Makes perfect sense to me. The cultist is much lower on the totem pole. Let's go after the biggest bad so that it doesn't come down the stairs and cause problems for Rasputin or even come back at me. Okay, so at a time when I need anything but Elder Signs, I get a ton of them. So. This is gonna mess me up big time because I'm gonna get two successes here, but I'm not gonna get enough to kill the thing. I could re-roll a die, but that takes away one of my stress, which I'd like to hold on to. It would add an extra damage, yes, but I don't see the value in that. So there's no point in re-rolling in my opinion. I can't kill it, I might as well just be happy with the two damage I did. Would have been maybe smarter to go after the cultist in this case, but I really thought the dice wouldn't land as poorly as that was. It's crazy, because that's a one in six chance. I guess there are Elder Signs with successes too, so it's a two and six to get Elder Signs, but still, that was a lot of them overall. So that is going to be the second action. So the question becomes now, Adam is two away from dying. So that also is a priority, like something else could trigger that you've seen it before where if I don't have enough stress, being that I only have one more remaining, uh, I could die because I only have two. Sl I have one slot that I can move further down and I'm safe. The second slot is death. So in order to get myself back up to full health, I'm gonna rest just to be smart. And I'm just gonna do this off camera, but basically I'm bringing Adam's health all the way back up to the top of the scale. So now I have five full points of movement uh, of wounds worth of taking before I die. So that's good. So now I'm fully recharged again. So that's good news. Bad news is I didn't do as much damage as I thought I would do, but I feel like I'm in a better spot. Famous last words. So just so you guys are aware of where Adam currently sits from the end of the last clip with all that fighting and healing, I went ahead and he was currently here. I healed him to go back up to the top. And the only thing I haven't done, which I wanted to show you that I was actually doing, was the one madness hit that he took for the very first attack. Now, technically that would happen when I rolled it, but I'd rather you guys actually see the board while I'm doing this stuff. Now you know that I'm two away from a threshold in the future. All right, it's time to find out what the Mythos card's gonna do to us. Oh, this is definitely different. Oh no. Oh no, add one fire token to your space in each adjacent space? That is not gonna help him in the long run in terms of getting out of there, maybe? Oh no. Well, I guess thematically it makes perfect sense. Now the good news here is in terms of adjacent spaces, obviously the space I'm currently in also gets a fire token. The only adjacent ones are this one and this one. This one is not adjacent. There is no line going out from this particular spot. So that's right, if I wanted to leave from this area, I'd have to take the long way around to the streets. So my space gets a token. That's fun. Three now behind me, so going back the other way doesn't sound like a good idea. And then even going forward doesn't sound like a good idea. So the longer I'm sitting here, the more of this whole it's fine, everything's gonna be okay kind of mindset starts to set in real nice as the smoke starts to choke me out as I try to shoot my way through this inferno. Now I glazed over this symbol on the card that we just pulled, but yeah, it does matter. We now have two of those in the pool, one more, and we're gonna have some action happening through the summoning track in stage one all over again. Well, the ironic thing is similar to Rasputin, he's in a spot that's just a blaze of fire, but he's currently in a safe space, so we get to draw a discovery card, find out if we can get something that can help us. And I've gone ahead and pulled Clutter. Hard to find anything in this mess. Yes, absolutely. You may take one stress, oh my gosh, that's all I have left with him, to claim the beaker. You may discard this card to deal wounds to all labs and figures either in your space, including you, or an adjacent space, each target takes wounds equal to the number of fire tokens in their space. Well, 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 that could help me. I could be, a, that could be a quick way to make quick 
use of destroying this cultist for sure in this room right here might be worth it. Anyway, it goes in my discovery card on the side of Adam's board. Certainly something that's interesting and might give him a leg up in the next turn. Now, one quick catch I want to make mention of that has no gameplay impact whatsoever, but absolutely would have had a gameplay impact had I forgotten this. But basically, in the last turn at the very end, Rasputin, we went through the resolving of the end of turn, which has a number of steps, like, you know, you do your end of turn effects, your fire check, which we did, check the Mythos discard pile to see if it triggers uh, moving on the summoning track. We did that, but nothing happened. Checking whether the Elder One summons, we did that fully. But the one thing I missed was one step right after after that that says Elder One end of turn effects, meaning when I was explaining stage two card that puts a token in Cthulhu space, that would have happened literally at that moment. So there should be a token for this scenario right now already sitting in this space. And what's even more brutal is we've come all the way around through Adam's turn right now. This is why I'm saying there's no gameplay impact because I'm catching this thankfully before this triggers again. And right now it would trigger again at the end of a turn, but it cannot be placed in the same space. There's already a token here. Plus we start looking around for the nearest space that doesn't have one. And you can see there's one sitting up here. So the next nearest space would be right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a token and put one over here. So you can see this is getting a little bit scary. Now we're gonna go ahead and start with Rasputin's turn. And this is where things are gonna get really fun because we can definitely use fire to our advantage here. And I'm absolutely going to do it before Rasputin triggers too much more madness, which he's on the cusp of doing, where his obsessive disorder is going to discard all of his great cards. So I'm going to try to use as much of them as I can right now while it makes sense to. Now, again, the lab notes is useless to me because I haven't found a companion or a student to pair it with. So I know I'm probably going to use, uh, lose that one. But the amulet is something you guys voted on the last video, and I really want to make use of that thanks to you guys choosing it. So what we're going to do is a little dance with Cthulhu. We're going to spend one full action literally just moving around so I can accumulate a ton of fire tokens onto Rasputin, which when we do the fire check will then be transferred as wounds to Cthulhu. And thanks to you guys, it's going to end up being six, which is pretty awesome. And how that's going to happen is Cthulhu sits in this room with me right now. We are I'm going to essentially move out of this room into this room with two. So Cthulhu would come with me as part of that first move action. Anytime you move out of a space with fire, you put that much fire in your or on your character board. So I put two tokens on Rasputin. Then we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing again, back to here. So you get the idea, we come back over here, we check how much we left, two, two more goes on my board, and then we're gonna come back over here for the third action. So I'm basically just dancing around in the fire and accumulating a ton of tokens. So in the end, it's a total of six that's gonna sit on my player board, and I'm gonna be able to transfer all of those uh, to wounds based on the card. We'll talk about how that works later, but it gives me incentive to essentially try to uh, put some big time damage on them, besides just rolling dice and things like that. So pretty happy about that. We've definitely got them closer to the uh, staircase, I guess, which is could be good or bad. I'm not too sure on that one just yet. But hey, that's a good number of hits if everything works out. Now, just to be 100% clear on the amulet and how it works is it doesn't guarantee wounds. It's not just guaranteed six hits or six wounds. It's if you would take wounds from fire, you may instead deal that many wounds to one enemy in your space. So in other words, you still have to roll for fire like you normally would, and then everything that you would take as wounds normally, you could then and may transfer to an enemy in your space. So it may not end up being six, but hey, it's going to be something, and that's always nice. It's it's there's a chance for some big time hits there. There's also a chance it could just flop. All right, are you guys ready for this? I'm making a big time attack here on Cthulhu. I'm going in with two green dice, one coming from brawling and one coming from his skill up and then the three black dice. I have two stress I can burn in order to reroll dice, hoping for big, big hits here. Hopefully I can get enough to make a big impact against Cthulhu here would be amazing. I don't think I can get 12, but I, I certainly could, uh, and I'm talking in total of the wounds I can do from this attack, plus my fire tokens, plus maybe another attack. Maybe, I don't know. I'm thinking probably more so like eight to 10. We'll see how it goes. Oh, this is really good because I got a couple of the Elder Signs. Those are good for Rasputin. I got a Madness and I got a Blank. So a success. So, so far I can transfer because of my Arcane Mastery, any Elder Signs count as successes. So right now I have three already. So that's not bad. I do have some stress that I could burn to reroll some dice here, which could be worth it. I could take this Madness though 
and stop because I, I can then actually bump things up. Um, yeah, it can be really good because it allow me. So one more madness will push me to the next threshold for Rasputin. Doesn't give me extra dice, but it would actually. Uh, it would. Uh, oh, but the next madness I go up on is going to destroy my chances of taking the fire damage. Oh no, there's a timing thing there. So if I take the madness from that attack right now, that could actually. That would have me taking all the wounds that I roll successes for. It could really, it could kill me. Uh, and it could ruin one of my lives with Rasputin because I have multiple. Don't want that. So maybe I will actually re-roll the Madness because I don't want that trigger just yet. So I'll spend one stress and I'll re-roll this. Please don't be Madness. Yes. Okay. So we got four hits. I'm happy with that. I'm going to stop right there for this attack. So that's going to be four damage on Cthulhu. We have four fresh wounds on Cthulhu in stage number two. The one thing that is stressing me out personally, though, is the realization that when I rolled that one madness, that scared me because if I actually get one madness that I can't reroll or get rid of, that will push me to an insanity threshold, which will trigger my obsessive disorder, which will then trigger the removal of discovery cards, including the amulet, which will then eventually trigger the fact that I cannot actually handle the fire that's on me, which is a lot right now, six, thanks to me dancing around like a fool, which I should have done after I made my attacks. But instead I did it beforehand, so there was probably some of you laughing at me at this point, but uh, yeah, I probably strategy-wise should have waited on that one, uh, because this is the type of situation I'm in now. So I could make one more attack, because I have one more action to do, I could make one more attack right now in order to try to hit Cthulhu for some more, but there's a massive risk of seeing madness, and if it happens, I'm in big trouble, but you know what? It's Cthulhu, you gotta take the risk. I'm just gonna do it. Famous last words. So three black dice here, let's see how this goes. And we're also of course grabbing the two green dice that he gets as well. All right, I don't wanna see a single madness and if I do, I'm using my stress. So don't happen, don't. I don't wanna see any more than one. Oh, that was perfect. Okay, I know this is just barely off screen, but yes, I, I made it through. Okay, so what I'm thinking here is if I've got, okay, so now I'm just trying to do some math in my head here. If I do one, if I spend one stress on, on Rasputin, which I'm going to do, and I reroll a green die, I know that I won't hit Madness. So let's go ahead and do that. Plus, I know if I see an Elder Sign, it's a good thing. There we go. So I got four. Now, the reason I did that is because I got four on the first attack. Now I'm going to get four on this attack. And if I get super lucky with my rolls on the six fire, then I can actually maybe take him down in a single turn, which would be ridiculous. So let's hope that this happens. So first off, we need to go ahead and grab three wounds and actually four wounds, sorry. And we'll just stack them on top here. So we got six now right there and two more right here for a total of eight. Pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, we're gonna continue on through, but we have to go to the mythos phase. Now this is obviously where things are gonna go haywire. So my plan again is gonna be all based on fire, but you don't actually do the fire trigger and the rolling for that until the end of your turn. So fingers crossed the mythos doesn't come to eat me alive. I don't think you guys understand how actually terrified I am right now to pull this card because every single one of these has always thrown a wrench into my plans. And I wouldn't be surprised this does the exact same thing. If I see another symbol, I'm gonna also have to trigger a bunch of stuff. Please, please do not. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. So Crawling Chaos, and yes, at the end of this turn, we're also gonna have to deal with stage one of Cthulhu advancing and all that other fun stuff that'll happen. But right now, each cultist is gonna move one space towards you. So I guess that's not terrible because now the cultists, the, the only ones that are on the board. Oh, actually, no, there's another one close by too. Um, and then if you are in a space with one of those tokens, you lose a sanity. Oh, no! No! <laughs> That's gonna do it. That is gonna screw me right there. So because of this, which was just off screen, you guys couldn't see the horror that I was just trying to uh, close my eyes and avoid. But yes, because I'm in a space with horror, I'm gonna lose a sanity, which is gonna push me to the threshold 
which is then going to trigger my obsessive disorder, discard my cards, and now I have a bajillion fire sitting on Rasputin that I'm going to have to deal with. But before we get out of hand, before we lose our own sanity, just trying to comprehend the, uh, the possible triggers and bounce off effects of everything, let's just start from the top of the card down below. So first off, we got the third trigger. It's not going to trigger until the end of turn, as we know, but right now the first thing that happens is each cult is going to move one space towards Rasputin. So this cultist is going to leave me alone and try to start heading down the stairs. In the base things have already gotten crazy so this cultist is going to move into the space here with Rasputin and Cthulhu and being that I am in a space with one of these tokens unfortunately I'm going to take a sanity hit which as you can see from Rasputin's board is going to be really unfortunate I'll probably use the word unfortunate quite a bit in the next few clips as everything about what's happening right now is really unfortunate so basically this is going to move to this trigger right here all of this fire right here, and you also notice there's a wound token. The rulebook states if you run out of actual fire tokens when you need to place them on the board, you just stop placing them. But if you need to place fire tokens on your character, you use wound markers instead. So that's why there's a wound marker here. Otherwise, you guys are probably wondering why that is. Well, seeing as we know we're in a really, really bad position because of the fact we're going to have to deal with a whole bunch of fire damage that's potentially going to hurt us a lot, I'm going to go ahead and, and actually bump up this skill as part of the fact I hit this threshold right here underneath. I'm going to bump up Unkillable, which allows me, which originally said one free death. If you would die from wounds instead, return to life with full health. I'm actually going to bump this up to one additional free death. So now I have a two total because you know what? The chances are when I have only one, two, three, four more slots before I die the first time and I've got this much on me. There's, there's a pretty hot chance that I could die here. And then on top of that, the cards that are sitting over here, based on my obsessive compulsive disorder, are also going to trigger. So let's take a look and see what happens here. Obsessive disorder trigger. So move your stress to match your health value. Well, the good news with that is my stress is actually going to go back to here. So that's the only positive out of all this. The downside is everything that I had here is gone. So that's unfortunate, which ruins everything that I had planned for sure as I mentioned many times already. Very, very sad about that. And that's going to essentially uh, end this particular hit from the Mythos card. But really, the Mythos card isn't over yet. There's actually more to it. That is the one stress that I take. Now, it's just the, the sorry, not stress, but the madness that I took um, from that Mythos card was specific to Rasputin. Adam doesn't have to take that, even though he's in a space with one of those tokens. Because the actual Crawling Chaos card states... If you are in a token space, lose a sanity. So it was just Rasputin. But you also notice at the bottom of that, it said to summon cultists in the yellow and red gates. So one more friendly cultist is showing up right here. And another cultist is going to show up right here. Now this is actually quite funny as well because the next step of Rasputin's turn is am I in a safe space or not? No, I am certainly not in a safe space. I cannot get a discovery card right now. So not only am I worried about fire and I've been talking about that and how bad that's going to be, I also have to deal with Cthulhu hounding me and then hitting me with all the dice he's got plus the cultists. This is just going to be a bad day all around for Rasputin. So let's start the party off with Cthulhu attacking Rasputin. Again, remember my stress was reduced, so I have the ability to reroll some of these dice if I need to, and I can guarantee you I'm probably gonna need to. So here we go, let's see how this pans out. Oh my goodness, that is so bad on every level. That was probably close to as the possible worst roll I could have gotten in Cthulhu just dished out a whole bunch of pain. So I'm absolutely going to be going ahead and trying to re-roll a couple of these dice. So I'm going to use one sp uh, stress on Rasputin to re-roll one of these black dice and then hope that it actually isn't as bad. Okay, so the madness is still there, but the wound is gone. I guess that's somewhat okay. And then we're going to go ahead and re-roll this other double one here, which would hit us for both. Oh, it did nothing. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I have one more stress left to take that I could take, but I'm just not going to do it. So all in all, I'm going to be taking three wounds, which is one away from death. So that's really bad, actually. Um, maybe I do. Maybe I do, actually. Maybe I do re-roll it again. Forget it. I'm using my last stress. Thing I'm really stressed out. I really don't want to die here. Okay, so I knocked that over. It was a tentacle, but that ends up being an Elder Sign, so at least that's not a success. I will double check Cthulhu's card. No, they do not use Elder Signs. So thankfully that actually worked out. I have no more stress left, but now I take two wounds, so I'm two away from death now. 
and I have zero ability to reroll dice anymore, which is scary. So, two away from death, I still have to resolve a cultist hit now. The cult is going to hit me for two green dice, and again, like I said, can't reroll anything here. Um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Oh, blanks all around. We got a freebie. Okay, so the cultist can't hit anything. It's like a perfect stormtrooper reaction right there. So that was flawless. Okay, so we survived that. The question is going to become, can we survive all the fire damage I put on me? Probably very unlikely with only two health left. But we have gotten through the investigator fight step. Now we're moving to the resolve end of turn for Rasputin. All right, Rasputin, it's time to check your fire. So first off, before we do that, I want to take the madness hit that I took during the attack from Cthulhu, showing you guys where I currently am on the track. So getting closer and closer, no longer on the threshold there. Okay, because I only took one Madness, and it was from Cthulhu's roll. I got blanks on the Cultist, so I was good there. We're going to take all six of these tokens away. I only have three of these Frost Black dice right here, so I'm going to roll three of them, and then another set of three. You can see I'm two away from death anyway. The chance of me surviving this are pretty much next to nil. I have no way to stop any of this except for just pure luck. So wish me luck, because I'm going to need it. Oh my gosh, I did it! I did it somehow, at least with the first three, and I'll probably still die anyway. Uh, but yeah, that works. Um, so Madness still triggers, so I still bump myself up there. I'm getting closer to the next Insanity Threshold. Uh, yikes, okay. And we're going to continue on here. The last three. Urgh. Oh my goodness, did I actually survive that? I did. I did survive it. That's insane. Well, it wouldn't have mattered anyway, because I could have come back from being unkillable, but, like, that's pretty impressive um, and very fluky. So uh, don't expect that to happen to you, because I don't know what the heck just happened there. But regardless, I got... Um, uh, I do take a damage, which I just took, and the other sign does nothing, and the Madness will actually bump me up to the next level. So now I'm actually gaining uh, two dice from skill-ups, and, of course, I can bump one of my skills up to the next level. So what does it say here? When you return to life, also heal all your stress. Cool. Uh, heal one stress for each elder sign you count as a success. That's actually really powerful. You have two free rerolls when attacking a target in your space. Oh, that's really powerful too. Oh, those are all so good. That's really tough. But now that I'm in a space with Cthulhu, and I'm going to be doing some attacks, it could be really worth it to have those rerolls. But again, stress could be, like, so this one here is heal one stress for each Elder Sign you count as a success. That's really good, too. And I know I've gotten quite a few now that I'm rolling so many dice with Rasputin. It might be more worth it to do this healing versus this one. So I'm going to go with this. Because I think the payoff of rerolls is higher on Arcane Mastery. So that's going to be my choice there. Again, we still have to go through this uh, situation because we did uh, trigger this. Now, technically, it says to move your stress to match. I'm already matched, so I have nothing to change there and then discard cards. So I didn't really focus on this too much because nothing's really changing anyway. I have no, it really does nothing this turn for the first time ever, actually. So in most turns, you'd be like, well, that was so much bad stuff. I mean, the whole thing's got to be over, right? Nope, you're wrong, actually. Now we're going to check to see how many of these symbols are in this discard pile. Yeah, we've got three more advancement on the track. That's right. So this thing's going to move down to this position. So we're essentially, as of right now, almost halfway. We're right at the crest of about the halfway point as time is kind of slipping away on us. But when that summoning track move, we also have to trigger stage one effects. And the reason we have to trigger these stage one effects is because it says when Cthulhu advances. So even though Cthulhu's not on the summoning track, the marker is representing Cthulhu on the summoning track advancing. So in this particular case, it says to put a token on your space. And if there's already one there, put it in the nearest space that doesn't have one. The nearest space would actually be down south in the basement where that one cultist has been hanging out for the entirety of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and take this token right here and place it just south down at the bottom. So now every space, you can see that it's off screen, so you're not going to be able to actually see where that was placed. So as you can see, every space in the basement now has one of those tokens. The next part of this card is really nasty because it has you summoning a cultist at every single token space. So we just went from a room that was not so crowded to a whole bunch of cultists popping out of the woodwork at every single token in the game. This is pretty insane. 
Things just went from bad to worse really, really quickly. And last but certainly not least is our friend, the Star Spawn, making his third appearance in this video series to cause us absolute misery and mayhem. Next up, the episode card states that when the Elder One advances, place one fire token in each space that has any cultists and no fire. That's really ironic because there's a thousand cultists on the game board right now, but there's literally only one space where there's not fire, and it's right here. And now it finally has some. As you can see, the basement is completely engulfed in flames, so there will be no additional fire tokens added through that episode trigger. Now that we've resolved that step in terms of the summoning track movement, the myth deck has been recompiled and shuffled. Finally, the last thing to do is the Elder One end of turn effects, which we know is going to have one of those tokens placed by Cthulhu in his space, but his space currently already has a token and the adjacent spaces around him in the basement already have one. So the next available adjacent space is actually up through the stairwell. And I did actually double check this on Board Game Geek to ensure that this is considered an adjacent space but it is being that it takes only one movement to move between this particular staircase here and to the opposite side on the higher level. So we'll be going ahead and placing one of these tokens upstairs. Things are getting pretty rough all over the board. And that is going to conclude part number three of Cthulhu Death May Die. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what do you think I should do next. I actually can't wait to see your reactions to how this game has gone from the beginning of this episode to the end of this episode. The change in the game state has gone from complete calm and utter control to complete chaos. And it's actually gone from being extremely felt at least easy at the beginning of this video to being extremely tough in terms of strategy now determining what is the next best thing to do up against all these enemies at the same time plus trying to take down Cthulhu is our major goal. We've got lots of stuff going on here. I love to hear your strategy in the comments below. A lot of you guys are playing this game as we go through this playthrough so I'm sure there'll be lots of comments and suggestions. Thank you again and as always keep on rolling solo. Thank you.